and welcome to Overtime brought to you by Kingscast at www.kingscast.net. I'm Keith Kornelak and I'm Chris Kalaszewski. Keith, where were you? That's right, Kings fans, we are back in right. Why are you wearing a Habs jersey? Well, Keith, I had the opportunity to be on Team 990 Montreal Sports Radio with oh. Sean Campbell and Mitch Gallo. And uh, talking Kings hockey, which is interesting because, you know, in Montreal, when they think Kings hockey, they think Kings cast. Well, it's kind of a normal transition. Yeah, okay. it really is. So I had a chance to talk to them, broke okay. down the Kings uh, matchup with the Habs that night, and, you know, I just went for it. And I predicted that the Kings would win 4-2 to two that night. You know, the, the Habs had all kinds of injuries, and it just made sense. The Kings were playing in a stable center. Yeah, it's absolutely. The Kings were playing at stable center for the first time in three weeks, so I thought that we'd be pumped up. So the, four, the score was 4-2. to two. Uh, but also in favor of the Canadians. So I said I would wear a Habs jersey if the Kings lost. And what happened? The Kings lost. They haven't been the Canadians since 2003. So here yeah. I am wearing the Habs jersey like I said I would. That's pretty bad. I would definitely take that bet. If you made that with a Ducks radio show, though, I'd kick you off the show. I would never do that. Permanently. Yeah. If we got, like, we're rolling Patrick Waugh back here, which is... Don't know why you own that in the first place since you're not a Habs fan, but there we go. Go Habs. It is episode 46, entitled, We Love the Habs. So, okay, so the Olympics are over, and uh, I just gotta say, Team Canada won the gold. To which I say to all of you U.S. people, ha ha. Oh, come on, great game. Congratulations to Team Canada. It was a fantastic game. You know, Sidney Crosby forever will be etched in history. God, I hate Sidney Crosby. But you know what, though? I, I, you're right, Chris. Team USA, valiant effort. They really did spoil some people in medals. Uh, they did lose in the silver. Really good team. But we're not here to talk about Olympic hockey. We're here to talk about the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, just back from the Olympic break, we are now 2-2-1. Two, two and one. Uh, won against Dallas, lost against Nashville, and of course Montreal here, and uh, won six nothing against Columbus the other night. Which yeah, that was good to see. But I very it. expected though. You know, six goals from six different players. Uh, I'll take it. That's what we're expected to do. We should be shelling teams like that. Chase Mason out of there. Everyone got a piece of the action, including some of the newcomers uh, like Freddie Modine. You know, I think the thing that I like most about uh, this, and this was the first game that I was able to see since I got back, is the fact that. Uh, the Kings are now rolling four lines, and all four lines have something to contribute. I mean, yeah. before the trade deadline, it was Evenons and Moeller and Purcell, and you don't know who was in there, and the fourth line was just sort of a throwaway line. I like where the Kings are right now. I think we have a very strong team in the top 12. No, I do too. I mean, finally, D. Lombardi went out there, and he wasn't going to mess around or take huge risk at the trade deadline. He didn't need to. No. Picked up the veteran leadership, you know. We're not going to roll into the playoffs with a bunch of kids like Marc-Andre Cliche <laughs> on the fourth line. You know, Muller went down to Manchester where he belongs and gets a good playoff experience down there in the AHL. But uh, definitely working out so far. I, I definitely like where we're at. Uh, you know, I was uh, happy with the Jeff Halpern pick. I thought it was a smart pickup. Uh, Freddie Modine, sort of a throwaway, and this guy has three points in four games for the Kings, two goals and an assist. I mean, this is kind of like a resurgence for him, and I like it. No, I do too. He's totally revitalized, and he's got the sick puck work out there. Oh, he's, yeah. He's taking care of business, and, uh, you know, still uh, making that push, but uh, I like it. Yeah, definitely. He's playing with Hansus and Simmons, and a uh, really good line, very gritty. Uh, tonight we played Chicago, the Blackhawks, who have something like 400 points already, and... Um, I didn't expect a lot. I thought the Kings would put up a goal or two, but it ended up being a pretty good game. Chicago, one of the top teams in the Western Conference, one of the teams that has picked to, you know, not like go to the Stanley Cup Finals, but maybe even win the Stanley it's Cup possible. Finals. So these are the games that you want to be playing at the end of the year, and I thought they hung in there pretty well tonight. Went to overtime, obviously, and Kings lost three to two. Uh, you know, off a really bad turnover by Brad Richardson. It looked like the Brad Richardson of last year. It did. He made a really bad pass there in the in the neutral zone at the end, and uh, Sharp came away with the game winner. I almost looked like at the end that uh, Quick wanted to go after Richardson. Did it look? A it did. Bit? I thought he wanted to start a fight with him. Yeah, he did. But rightfully so. Quick, had, Quick had, as usual, had played a really good game, and uh, Brad Richardson turns over the pot, which is. You know, never fun for a goaltender, that's for sure. No, but at the very least, we got the point, and that does matter in a very tight Western Conference. Obviously, San Jose and Chicago are at the top. I don't think anyone's going to catch them, so it's basically a six-team battle to me. 
Yeah. And the Kings are battling for the fourth and fifth playoff spot. You got Vancouver and Phoenix in there, and they're sort of battling with them. You know, Colorado hanging in there, Detroit surging now all of a sudden. Every single point matters, so I will take the point. I will definitely take the point, and I think Chicago is certainly ahead above us. Uh, if we had to play them in the playoffs, I think it would be four straight overtime losses for the Kings. <laughs> they are a really good team. Uh, they uh, are. You know, hopefully we'll be there next year, uh, one would hope. But uh, no, definitely a good game tonight, and uh, yeah, I was proud that the Kings were able to get a point. A little disappointed. I uh, had some Facebook uh, back and forth with a few people in Chicago, uh, so screw you. the podcast, a typical tradition, when a player leaves the Los Angeles Kings, uh, we bid them a very fond and respectful farewell. So we say goodbye to Teddy Purcell with our third round pick. So, Teddy, this is for you in a segment we like to call, See Ya. Teddy Purcell, you played 41 games for the Kings, and you ended up with three goals and three assists for six points. So I guess that second line winger thing isn't going to quite work out. See ya! Teddy, we're friends on Facebook, and your favorite interests are showering, naps, family, and friendlies. Friendlies? Huh? What? See, See ya! So, Teddy, we talked to you at Hockey Fest. You said you were ready to take that next step. You said you put on 20 pounds of muscle. Connie Kim even asked, is that going to affect your speed? But he said, well, the media will let me know. Well, we are, so see ya. Teddy, we sent you packing with the third rounder to Tampa. And your first night is a Tampa Bay Lightning. You score the game winner on a penalty shot. My question is, where the hell did that come from? See ya. Kings fans, your question of the day is which team did the best at the trade deadline and why? Leave your comments, as always, downstairs. So Kings fans, your next episode of Overtime will occur after the National Predators game on Sunday at noon, so stay tuned for that. I'm Keith Cornelick. And I'm Chris Calzius. And thank you for watching Overtime by Kingscast. <laughs>